हेलो एवरीवन डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल वेंकी हिस्ट्री हब सो आई विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग क्लासेस रिगार्डिंग द हिस्ट्री एंड व्हिच विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर और यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेज एंड एनी स्टेट पीएससी एंड इट विल ऑल बी हेल्पफुल हेल्पफुल फॉर क्लियरिंग यूजीसी नेट एंड एनी स्टेट सेट okay and today we are going to discuss about the history of rashtrakutas so basically rashtrakutas were one of the important dynasty that ruled over india and their contribution is well known to us and mostly they contributed in literature and we see that uh, kannada literature beginning of kannada literature during the rashtrakutas period and we also see some of the art and architecture like uh, uh, ellora cave temple or we see kailash temple at ellora and elephanta caves in near mumbai these are the some of the important art and architectural contributions uh, that were given by rashtrakutas okay so it's one of the important topic Uh, which we get questions in all the competitive exams so going detail into the content we uh, see that uh, uh, basically the history of rashtrakutas uh, rashtrakutas basically trace their descendancy from yadava family uh, yadava family remember that uh, uh, god hindu god named krishna is from yadava community so these rashtrakutas also trace their descendancy from yadava family and we uh, we see one copper plate uh, that supporting their descendancy from yadava family that a copper plate grant of 1914 so this grant was laid in 1914 uh, says that the dantu durga the dantu durga was a founder of rashtrakuta dynasty was born in line of yadava satyaki okay this is one of the theory that put forth okay then we see the other theory that uh, this uh, rashtrakutas basically were originated in latulora uh, place in maharashtra and we can we see other one like rashtrakutas uh, was a title it was a title rashtrakutas was a title given to a governor governor under the central government there will be many provinces so the head of the province is governor so the governor was called as a rashtrakuta so this this was during the period of chalukyas uh, during the period of chalukyas the governor was called as a rashtrakuta and uh, other theory we see that the rashtrakutas basically doc by dr as altkar he says that rashtrakutas were basically kannada origin so we see most of the uh, literature kannada literature was growing in this period like uh, we see one of the important and greatest king that is amoga varsha ruler of rashtrakuta patronate or he was also he was also author of one of the book known as kaviraja mar is written in kannada so it was like uh, the kannada literature was patronized not only poets but also by the rulers so like that they trace their origin from from kannada so after this theories uh, we see that uh, Mm, the earliest reference to the rashtrakutas so how the way the rashtrakutas were seen in the history so we see in the ashokan edicts the rashtrakutas were mentioned as a rashtrika or ratika so rashtrika or ratika so basically rashtrika ratikas were are referred as a tribes referred as a tribes who lived earlier in the part of punjab so later on they migrated to uh, south 
little further south and up to the Deccan. So this is the uh, a little bit about the how they um, how the theories says about the origin of Rashtrakutas. So now next let's go into the political history of Rashtrakutas. So before going into the political history, now just have a look at this map. So uh, always the um, the contemporary rulers were Gurjara Pratihara. The contemporary rulers of Rashtrakutas were Gurjara Pratiharas and the Palas. And these three dynasties or three, three empires used to fight always. So these three empires fight is known as a tripartite struggle. And why these three empires were always conflict with? So, so they were a uh, possession. Means uh, the uh, Dob or a fertile land which is located between the river Yamuna and Ganga, Ganga uh, that is place known as a Kannar. So to have a, a rule or to ra have a control over this land, this these three powers were always fighting. So we see there's uh, some part of uh, this Rashtrakuta is going up to the Kannar and conquering and uh, this palace going to the Kannar and having control over it. And most of the time the control of Kannar was in the hands of Gurjara Pratiharas. So to have a little bit clear idea or um, well knowledge about this tripartite struggle, I have explained in the previous year video that is in the uh, history of Gurjara Pratiharas hmm, detail. So we just uh, in the description the link will be there. Just visit once and watch that video. So the Rashtrakutas see the expansion from the north near Kannaj. Kannaj was the uh, capital of Ashwadhana. So during the ancient period it was a capital and it was controlled under the Ashwadhana. Okay and it uh, in the south it is there till Kerala and part of Tamil Nadu. So this is the extension of Rashtrakutas in the time period. So now coming to the political history of Rashtrakutas. So it is one of the important part to have a good understanding about the, any dynasty. Okay, The political history. Uh, basically the po Rashtrakutas was founded by Dandi Durga. So Dandi Durga, he, he was a son of or his father name. Dandi Durga father name is known as a Indra Raja. So Dandi Durga also known as a Danti Varman. Danti Durga also known as a Danti Varman. So basically starting with his career, uh, he began his career as an a feudatory, as an a feudatory under the uh, Badami Chalukyas. So so you do it should not get confusion with the Chalukyas. So let me give you a clear idea about the Chalukyas. Uh, basically we see uh, many branches of Chalukyas that ruled over India in different time period. So basically before Rashtrakutas we see uh, the Chalukyas that is Badami Chalukyas. Badami Chalukyas. Uh, these people ruled over the western part of India that is present day uh, part of Maharashtra and Karnataka and we see that uh, the king yeah king the Pulakeshi the second uh, who defeated Ashwardhana in a war so it belongs to the Chalukyas Badam so this is uh, earlier to Rashtrakutas and during the are contemporary to the Rashtrakutas were another branch of the Chalukya that is Vengi Chalukyas or Vengi Chalukyas also known as a Eastern Chalukyas so these were the contemporary and we see the other the, after the Rashtrakutas after the decline of the Rashtrakutas the Western Chalukyas or these also known as a Veng, uh, Kalyani Chalukyas so uh, they ruled after the Rashtrakutas and we some we see some of the Rash, uh, 
Chalukya that ruled over part of Gujarat. So you have a clear idea about it. Okay, coming into the political career of Danti Durga, as I said, he started his career as a feudatory under the Chalukyas. And the last ruler, that is Kirti Varman, um, Chalukyan ruler, uh, was defeated in the hands of Danti Durga. So once he was defeated, the Danti Durga declared independence and laid the foundation for the Rashtrakuta Empire. So he laid a foundation for the Rashtrakuta Empire. So during his period, he tried to expand it, uh, his empire towards Malwa, Koshala, Kalinga, and Lata, etc. So these are the places where he tried to expand his uh, territory. So since he tried to expand his territory, so he waged a war against Malwa and he won a war. Won war. So now as a victory, he performed a ceremony, a ceremony known as a Hiranya Garbadana. So a ceremony performed that thing, Dandi Durga performed a ceremony known as a Hiranya Garbadana at Ujjain. Ujjain was a capital of Malwa. Okay. So now we see some of his titles, titles of Dandi Durga. So these Rashtrakuta's rulers, they uh, most of them had the titles, titles like Rajati Raja, Parameshwara. Uh, these are the common titles, but we see the titles of Danti Durga, that is uh, the Rajati Raja, he had the title of Rajati Raja, Parameshwara, and Kadagavalaka, and finally Maharajati Raja. So basically, Rajati Raja means king of king. And Maharajati Raja means greatest king of kings, greatest king of kings. And Parameshwara, we see Parameshwara is a supreme god. So these were the titles that uh, Danti Durga had. With the foundation of Rashtrakuta Empire, so it's almost ruled around 225 years. So the Rashtrakuta ruled around 225 years uh, and we see that uh, uh, what are the evidences uh, that says about uh, Danti Durga. So we see uh, two evidences that is a uh, Samangad plate inscription uh, that says about the Danti Durga and another one is, uh, is uh, Dashavatara cave inscriptions. So this Dashavatara cave inscription is it located at Elora. So these two evidences says about Danti Durga and his rule. Then after Danti Durga, we see the next ruler, uh, this the Krishna. So look at the time period. So time period varies from book, book to book. So it's not the uh, exact time period. So I have given this time period so, so that you will have a little clear idea where exactly the ruler uh, ruled the period. Okay, the next ruler Krishna basically was a uncle of the Danti Durga. He was an uncle of Danti Durga and he was, he was known as a Kannara or Kannaresh, Kanneshwara. So he was known as a Kannara or Kannesh, Kanneshwara. And we see next the titles. What are the titles that Krishna had? Like Alak Akaleshwara, Akaleshwara Shubhatunga, Pridvi Vallabha, and finally Sri Vallabha. And Sri Vallabha. Sri Vallabha is a uh, is title. So basically, he fought with the Sri Purusha. Uh, Sri Purusha was a ruler of Western Ganga dynasty. Uh, so in the north he was fighting uh, with uh, Gujar Pratihara and the Pallavas. And in south we see he had um, these Rashtrakutas had many enemies like uh, Venge Chalukyas, uh, Western Ganga dynasty, Pallavas, 
or Chola Chera Pandyas. So this way the enemies or contemporary rulers of Rashtakutas. So now see Sri Purusha was defeated and some of the territory of Sri Purusha were taken by this Rashtakuta ruler that is Krishna. And after that a Sri Purusha or Western Ganga ruler was made as a feudatory of Rashtakuta Empire. So he was there for a long time as a royal feudatory to Rashtakutas. So Krishna also uh, fought with uh, Vishnu Vardhana. Uh, Vishnu Vardhana is a ruler of Eastern Chalukyas. As I said, the Eastern Chalukyas were the uh, enemy of Rashtakuta. So he was uh, Krishna defeated him. So during the entire period of uh, the Krishna, uh, he is known for the thing that is uh, construction of Kailas temple. So construction of Kailas temple is a magnificent temple or is a monolithic rock cut temple located at Ellora. So this is known as a Kailas temple. So we see some pictures uh, like uh, this is the Kailas temple which is located in present day state of Maharashtra near Aurangabad uh, in the caves of Ellora. So we see the temple. So this whole temple, uh, like we see this long, this long is uh, around 200 and feet, 200 and feet, and the uh, width, this width we see, uh, this is around 100 and um, feet. Okay. So this is a, a wonder of how this temple is constructed like. So this temple is carved out of a single stone that a stone uh, is uh, there as uh, 200 feet long and 100 feet width. So out of this rock this temple is constructed. You can see here the rock is cut in this place. Okay. So basically the scholars think this uh, uh, temple was built or constructed or carved within the year of uh, 18 years so some of the scholars they say uh, today with the technology that we have it's not possible to construct such kind of temple uh, in this period so within the period of 18 years even with the technology we cannot construct such kind of temple so based on this we can think that how the technology that uh, these Rashtakutas had okay see the very wonderful and magnificent temple with a, a rock basically it to construct this temple uh, you need to have a clear idea and uh, how to construct the temple basically whenever we build any construction or any building or a house we construct it from the basement means from uh, we lay the foundation in the uh, little digging and the house will be coming upper upper level but basically to think about this the temple is uh, carved from top from top to um, bottom so this is the uh, a very well known feature uh, this the Rashtakutas had okay this is some other uh, architecture like no uh, these are the some of the architecture uh, or so this place is known as the elephanta caves so elephanta caves i have been to this place okay, this elephanta caves uh, is near mumbai so it is in an island so to go to this place uh, you need to travel from um, mumbai that is uh, uh, gateway of India to little in into the sea so it's like an island uh, will be there and you have to travel by boat okay so this is this is known as a uh, earlier this was known as a Sri Puri so once the Portuguese came and they named this as a elephanta case 
as so earlier it is known as a sri puri okay now uh, this is the another architectural type style at the erected during the period of rashtrakutas and the next one we see um, that uh, one of the uh, dashavatara temple dashavatara temple is located yeah ellora nellora kings are dashavatara temple or dashavatara cave so these are the some of the examples of rashtrakuta architecture we see next one that is uh, next to ruler political history the govinda second uh, govinda second he ruled for a period of 6 years so basically he is the eldest son of krishna so mainly the rashtrakuta empire they used to follow out the system uh, hereditary system that eldest son should take over the throne so like the elder uh, govinda was eldest son of krishna uh, but all the powers were in the hands of his younger brother that is dhruva so he was mm, for a namesake uh, ruler for some time so the Uh, he addicted to the luxury and he did not rule so the dhruva his younger brother uh, said to take uh, took the throne from govind so he said this is time period then the next ruler we see dhruva dhruva is one of the powerful king or ruler of the rashtrakuta dynasty so he ascended the throne by replacing his brother that is a govinda the third and he had some titles like khali vallabha khali vallabha is a khali vallabha is a be correct with the spelling and in the next one sri vallabha and dara varsha maharaja tiraja so i said it's a common a title that this rashtrakutas had and parameshwara these are the titles that dhruva got so we see during his period as i said he is one of the important and powerful ruler of rashtrakuta dynasty so he defeated vatsaraja vatsaraja is a ruler of gujjara pratihara dynasty hmm so as i said uh, there are, there used to be a tripartite struggle there is to be always a fight among these three empires so during the period of dhruva uh, there was a war with a vatsaraja the ruler of gujjara pratihara and the other ruler that is dharmapala the ruler of pala empire so the dhruva fought with this uh, two kings on the north india so it is in north in north to uh, rashtrakutas so coming to the south he also fought uh, in the south with the uh, rulers of ganga dynasty and vingi chalukyas so each ruler one by one uh, whoever comes they used to have or continued their enmity in the same way and uh, we see some little extension that he forced nandivarman nandivarman was a pallava ruler uh, to accept its suzerainty so he forced him to accept its suzerainty to be under uh, him under dhruva so he was there uh, as a feudatory uh, under dhruva so dhruva the ruler he had four sons which among four one was uh, deceased or died and the other two three were there so among them govinda the third succeeded uh, dhruva so first uh, we see uh, some of his titles so like uh, prabhat prabhat varsha uh, is a varsha prabhat varsha var, not varta prabhat varsha jagatunga anupama and kirti narayana prithvi vallabha 
ಶ್ರೀವಲ್ಲಭ ವಿಮಲಾದಿತ್ಯ ಅತಿಶ ಧವಲ ತ್ರಿಭುವನ ಧವಲ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಟೈಟಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ರೂಲರ್ ಸೊ ಈ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಷನ್ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಧ್ರುವ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಈ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಲೈವ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ವಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಷನ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೂ ದಿ ಎಲ್ಡ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಸನ್ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಗೋವಿಂದ ವಾಸ್ ಎಂಗ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಸನ್ ದ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಧ್ರುವ ಆರ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಂಬರಸ ಆರ್ ನೋನ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ತಂಭ ಕಂಬರಸ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನೋನ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ತಂಭ ಫಾಟ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಫಾಟ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸೋ ವಿಕ್ಟೋರಿಯಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಗಾಟ್ ವಿಕ್ಟ್ರಿ ಓವರ್ ಕಂಬರಸ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ಟು ರೂಲ್ ದಿ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಕೂಟ ಎಂಪಾಯರ್ ಸೊ ಡೂರಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ಇ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಚರ್ಡ್ ಕನ್ನಜ್ ಕನ್ನಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ದೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಂಗಾ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಚರ್ಡ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರ್ಜರ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಎಟ್ ದ ಡೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ರೂಲರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಾ ಗುರ್ಜರ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಗಭಟ್ಟ ಸೊ ಸೊ ಈ ಕ್ಯಾ he had a he aged war with nagbatta and he defeated him and uh, other side the dharmapala dharmapala uh, was a ruler of pala dynasty and uh, chakrayuda chakrayuda was ruler of kannada he was like a puppet ruler in the hands of these three empires okay now let us see the southern conquest of govinda so he also uh, defeated eastern chalukyas that is vijayaditya ruler and he also fought with a uh, pallava ruler that is uh, dantivarman he also fought with a pallava ruler that is dantivarman and he waged war against chola chera pandyas very one of the important southern indian kingdoms and made them to pay tribute to him made them to pay tribute to him so uh, this was the uh, power of the rashtrakuta empire so we see the next ruler uh, that is amogavarsha amogavarsha is a well known ruler of rashtrakuta empire he is a greatest ruler of the dynasty and he is a brave ruler and he is said to be ruled for longest period he ruled around 64 years from beginning so he he ascended on the throne around at the age of 15 and ruled for 64 years so we see some of his titles like nuputunga and atishada wala veera narayana rath ratta martanda and sri vallabha these are the titles of amoga varsha so you should remember some time in the questions are asked based on the titles so he is known for his uh, shifting the capital so basically before the capital was mayur kendi mayur kendi that is located in present day bidar and he shifted to maniketa or maniket uh, which is in present day state, uh, district of gulbarga the both are in the state of karnataka so this is was uh, uh, different bidar was another district and gulbarga is another district so simply they he changed or he transferred the capital to maniketa so maniketa is a well known city or he constructed the, the amogavarsha constructed this city uh, well so uh, who the sulaiman the arab traveler visited this place visited this maniketa maniketa and he explained about how the city was 
so the sulaiman arab traveler as i said uh, he says or he mentioned that uh, uh, the amogavarsha rule uh, is one of the best or one of the four among the contemporary empires of the world so this is the because uh, he, his rule was um, peaceful and prosperity was there and we see the next one that is uh, he was called as a ashokan of south or ashoka of south india uh, it, it, it was called by historian known as panchamukhi panchamukhi called him the ashoka of south india so basically the western ganga dynasty this were the feudatories of the rashtrakutas and during his period so uh, as he was a minor um, in beginning so there were many civil wars or revolts that came up so during this time shivamara the uh, second what he did he, he started to revolt against amogavarsha so during this period to reduce this conflict or uh, all the revolts so he gave two of his daughters in marriage to rulers of ganga dynasty so like this this uh, matrimonial relations relation began between the rashtrakutas and ganga dynasty so and from this time onwards uh, there was a continuous loyalty to rashtrakutas from the side of ganga dynasty or from the side of ganga rulers so as i said during his minor minor rule he was attacked or revolts rebellions came up uh, during his but the karka um, he was a, his cousin his cousin was karka uh, was helping him to get all these territories back so once he became a powerful ruler all these territories came in the hands of uh, this ruler Okay. the copper grants so the the two evidences the the deal with the rule of amogavarsha that is the copper grants found that is found in baroda one is baroda and second is broch these two grants gives details about the amogavarsha's rule so amogavarsha is basically a disciple of acharya jinasena So Arjuna Sena is a uh, basically Jain monk, and used to the the ruler that is Amiga Varsha used to follow the uh, Jain religion, and he is a follower of Digambara branch of Jainism. So there are two sects, Saitambara and Digambara. So he followed the Digambara branch of Jainism, and along with the Jainism, he was also patronizing. a uh, buddhism and hinduism so uh, coming to the religious policy of rashtrakutas the they were tolerant they were tolerant and they did not harm any person who belongs to the other religion the persons like a buddhism or hinduism they did not harm anyone so they were patronizing and they were encouraging so this was the peaceful co- coexistence of uh, different religions religions during the period of rashtrakutas so as i mentioned this one then the next so this uh, the jain narayana temple this is a temple in pattadakal pattadakal is a uh, place in uh, karnataka so it's a old heritage site uh, by unesco so this temple is built by amoga varsha so there are an- another temples like basadi and kannur and nemanita this tem- were built by amogavarsha during his period so basically amogavarsha was a scholar let's um, see he was a scholar in kannada and sanskrit literature and we see his work kaviraja marga so is the original work of amogavarsha is written by him also 
earliest or earliest available Kannada work uh, written by Amoga Varsha. And he had also written another work that is Prashnotra Ratnamalika. Uh, it's a work in the Sanskrit. It's a work in Sanskrit. And he patronized many scholars like uh, Mahaviracharya and who wrote Ganita Sara Sangraha and Veera Sena was a math mathematician wrote Davala and Jina Sena as I said he was a guru who wrote Adi Purana and Mahapurana we deal with the literature part okay this is all about Amoga Varsha a very important and powerful king or ruler of the Rashtakuta dynasty so after Amoga Varsha we see the next ruler that is Krishna the second he ruled between 8 878 to up to 914 so krishna was uh, son of amoga varsha and uh, in we see the most of the successors used to kill their fathers or uh, after killing them or after uh, death they used to come but in the matter of amoga varsha amoga varsha took voluntary retirement from the politics so he left the throne to his son, his son voluntarily. So, so since I said he was a follower of Jainism, so he took the Jainism means uh, he wanted to follow the religious policy. And like uh, King Chandragupta Maurya, he was fo uh, following this tradition. Okay. So the Krishna, uh, his queen was a, a Chedi princess known as a Haiya. So she was a Chedi princess. So he got now matrimonial alliances with a Chedi ruler. And we see uh, Krishna the second, he defeated Gujara, Gujara Boja, or he is also <coughs> Mihir Boja. So Gujara Boja is one of the important and greatest ruler of Gurjara Pratyahara Empire. So he was defeated in the hands of Krishna the second. So we see the how powerful uh, these rulers were, how powerful this Rashtrakutas were. Okay. So at that time the uh, Mihir Bhaja was conquering all the territories in and around in North India. So he was during his period the empire reached with zenith or powerful uh, of Gujara Pratiharas. Okay, so uh, such a kind of king the Krishna was able to defeat and he used to put check to him up to the Narmada river. So he did not allow him to cross the Narmada river and he made particular or small uh, particular principality for of this uh, Mihir Boja and later next we see that he merged Lata Lata line means uh, Lata line is uh, one of the uh, Rashtrakuta branch which ru which was ruling in part of Gujarat was merged to Manaketa branch of Rashtrakuta so it was merged like so uh, Krishna he married his daughter to Chola king so that is Aditya and now these rulers both rulers have so once Aditya died uh, Krishna the second tried to annex Chola empire to his uh, empire that is Rashtrakuta but uh, it was a failure you know, to in the hands of Parantaka so Parantaka is the next ruler of Chola empire so it became a failure to to him so he was a uh, little powerful was able to uh, uh, protect his empire we see the next ruler uh, that is indra the third uh, basically he, he was a grandson of krishna the second the previous ruler he was a grandson of the krishna the second so he he was a Kalachuri, Prince of Kalachuri dynasty. So sometimes there is a discontinuity like a daughter's son is brought and kept on the throne. So 
things happen like that so indra third was a princess of kalachuri dynasty put on the rashtrakuta empire so during his period captured kannur and destroyed it he destroyed kannur and during this time the gujara pratihara ruler was mahipal so it was in the hands of or it was ruled by the kannur was ruled by gujara pratihara that is mahipala and where indra had annexed it and destroyed this place and due to this annexation of kannur Uh, so this weaken the power of gurjara pratiharas so it weaken this their power then next ruler we see that uh, amoga varsha amoga varsha basically uh, the second amoga varsha the second ruled for a period of just one year so he was uh, assassinated or he was killed by his brother that is govinda the fourth or he was killed or he, he had a natural death and we see now govinda the fourth he ruled for a period of 5 years but during his period he lost the control of kannaj means uh, his success uh, his predecessor uh, or is like uh, predecessor who was in the the second who got control over the kannaj so during the period of govinda the fourth the control of kannaj was lost and we see so the other neighboring ter- uh, rulers like pengi chalukyas or eastern chalukyas also defeated him and when he, once he was defeated much of the territories was lost uh, to them and uh, many other feudatories of rashtrakutas began to revolt again the rashtrakutas so basically we see that rashtrakutas were uh, given more power to feudatories or the provincial governors so like that the feudatories had most most of the power in their hands and then next ruler we see with the help of next ruler amoga varsha he came to the amoga varsha the third he came to the rule rule with the help of arkesari arkesari is basically ruler of vemulawada uh, with the help of him he came to the throne so govinda third so during his period uh, a poet known as ravinaka bhatta he was patronized he was a kannada poet okay the next is amoga varsha this so basically is known as amoga varsha the third also known as badyaga and he was a younger brother of um, krishna the second is or indra the third the five, the above ruler who ruled between this period so he was a younger brother of the indra the third uh, basically was in exile and came to the throne with the help of during the period of this period he was in exile and when there is no ruler with the help of arkesari uh, who was ruling in the part of andhra was a feudatory came to the throne so we see the next ruler that is krishna the third krishna the third he ruled between 939 to up to 967 this was the time period so he was the last and important the greatest ruler of rashtrakuta empire so he was the one of the last powerful ruler of rashtrakuta empire and we he had many titles we see some of them like uh, akala varsha maharaja ati raja parameshwara and parama maheshwara we see here parameshwara and parama maheshwara this is a new title that he had and shri prithvi vallabh this also one so these are the titles that krishna the third he had so he was the last and powerful ruler of rashtrakutas 
So during his period, he waged wars against the rulers of Chola and Chaira and Pandya. And during this period, there was a uh, battle known as a Battle of Thakkala. Battle of Thakkala. So the battle was between fought between the uh, Chola Empire, Chola King, that is Raja Ditya, uh, son of Parantaka, and the ruler of Rashtrakuta, uh, that is Krishna the third. So this battle was fought between them. And during the period of Krishna the third, so what he, he was powerful and he was um, conquering or acquiring territories. So once he acquired what he used to do, he used to build a temple in conquered or acquired uh, territory. So like that he built um, temples in Rameshwaram, in southern part of uh, southern tip of India. And the temples are like a Krishneshwara and Ganda Marthandiya temple. Um, these two temples are famous temple that were built in Rameshwaram. So it's it, basically it was not uh, part of uh, Rashtrakuta Empire, but these two temples were constructed by Rashtrakuta rulers. And uh, he also led uh, northern expedition, north expedition, uh, which is an uh, important one. So he led uh, expedition against Siyaka. So Krishna III defeated Siyaka in the northern expedition and Siyaka was a ruler of Paramara. Paramara. And he occupied Ujjain. So during the period of Krishna II, Siyaka was defeated and occupied his territory. Now the Siyaka is very furious. So he wanted to take revenge or he wanted to avenge. So he is ready to take avenge. And we see the results later what, what kind of revenge is going to take later on. So since he was the last two powerful ruler of Rashtrakuta Empire, so the empire began to disintegrate as is the beginning of the uh, 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 decline of the Rashtrakuta Empire. And during the East period, uh, large grants were given to uh, feudatory rulers. So among them, the largest grant was given to Thailapa. Thailapa was a feudatory of Rashtrakuta. Uh, that he is given in the heart of the empire, that is in the middle of the empire, uh, he gave large uh, land grants. And because of this land grants uh, which, gave, which was given in the uh, middle of the empire, so uh, Thailapa was uh, uh, making himself to be strong enough to face the Rashtrakuta. So after some time, uh, he overthrew the Rashtrakuta and started his own empire that is uh, 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 Eastern Ch uh, sorry, Western Chalukyas are known as a Kalyani Chalukyas. So uh, we see the next ruler uh, that is uh, Kotiga. Kotiga ruled from 967 to 72. So during his period, as uh, his predecessor, uh, that is uh, Krishna, or Krishna the third, his predecessor was Krishna the third, um, who waged a war against Siyaka, the Paramara ruler. So now he is in a position to take revenge or avenge this uh, situation. So during the period of Kotika, uh, Siyaka attacked Maneketa. So Maneketa was the capital of Rashtrakutas which was built by Amoga Varsha. So this uh, attack, so basically at that time when Siyaka attacked, he did not invade. He just was uh, destroying or looting the uh, wealth that is there with the Rashtrakuta. So that was the situation and during the period of Kotiga, Siyaka avenged. And next ruler that is Karka. Karka as he is also known as a Karka the second. Karka. So, uh, he was not a last ruler, So, but he was a uh, ruler killed by Thailapa. So, Thailapa was a uh, feudatory of Rashtrakutas. And once he killed Thailapa and he declared independence. And he laid the foundation for an uh, independence kingdom that is Western Chalukyas or Kalyani Chalukyas.
and finally we deal with the indra fourth indra fourth is said to be the uh, last ruler of rashtrakuta empire he was the last ruler of rashtrakuta empire uh, basically uh, the feudatory the loyal feudatory that is western uh, western ganga ruler uh, is known as a paramandi marasimha uh, he tried to put the grandson of the krishna indra the fourth the grand sorry the krishna the third so indra the fourth was a grandson of krishna the third okay he tried to put indra the fourth on the throne of rashtrakuta uh, but uh, it was like a failure because uh, all were attacking like a Ch- engi chalukyas and from the northern side and from the most powerful the eastern chalukya kalyan chalukyas uh, acquired all the territories and now they declared independence so the uh, uh, kalyan chalukyas did not allow uh, rashtrakuta's rule to be continued so with this uh, we come to the end with the political history of rashtrakutas okay now let's uh, deal with the administrative system of rashtrakutas so administrative system also one of the important feature that rashtrakutas had so basically kingship was a hereditary and so uh, it's like a uh, kingship the king has to be uh, uh, once a father then son then his son so like a hereditary system in the kingship was and most most probably the a king a throne or a crown is passed into the hand of the eldest son so most of the time it was happening but uh, sometime there is a excuse like a, uh, a ablest son could take over the throne means ablest son means who, who is whoever is capable so he used to take over the uh, throne and so now we see the administration of rashtrakutas is basically divided into two parts that is a central administration and the other one provincial administration now first we deal with the central administration then we go into the provincial administration so coming to the, coming with the central administration uh, basically the king used to choose his successor okay and during his lifetime the king lifetime we used to train the prince uh, the prince so or like uh, used to uh, like help in uh, so the prince used to assist in administrative system and even sometime the prince is taken for a military campaign so whenever the wars are taking place the prince also is taken so the eldest who is going to be a king is to be with his father and takes care of the administrative works and military campaigns and the other sons suppose a king had a, a more than one son then the other sons used to be made as a governor of provinces so like that uh, the remaining sons whoever is there they used to be uh, appoint as a governor of provinces and used to keep them their own so it did not allow them to be part of the central government administration and basically the central uh, king was the supreme authority means that all the powers were rested in his hands and whatever he says and whatever uh, he does this is the uh, uh, true means he has the sole authority and he was assisted by some of the ministers so to administer to help the or ad, assist the administrative system he had some of his ministers like you see pm that is pradhan mantri Pri, sorry prime minister so pm is a prime minister he used to be there and finance minister or foreign minister as sorry foreign minister and finance minister that is a revenue and treasury ministers were there and there was also chief justice minister of chief justice and commander in chief and finally that purohita purohita the priest used to used to play a main role 
so he used to play the main role and he used to uh, advise the king in what matters to be done so with the help of these ministers uh, king used to carry out his administrative system so basically the how the central government was the partly the some um, territory territory was in the hands of central government and partly the territories were administered by feudal okay so the um, uh, central administer territories were uh, in the hands of uh, the king so the feudatories the feudatories used to make like what they do so their work is whenever the king calls them they have to come and when they whenever the meeting is convened so they have to attend for the meetings and whenever the king needs the army these feudatories uh, have to provide the army or the soldiers uh, to fight in a war so this the most of the mostly the autonomy is given to the uh, the feudatories or provincial government and uh, sometime even the the powerful feudatories have their their own chance of minting their own kind coins so this was the system and uh, uh, th this uh, feudatories used to uh, pay the regular a tribute to the uh, the central government and uh, they have to attend the imperial court uh, whenever to do so or ask to do so okay coming into the next one that is the provincial government so basically the central government was divided uh, like that so uh, rashtra so rashtra is uh, another next unit of uh, unit to the uh, central government then we, uh, the rashtra was divided into vishayas and vishayas were divided into buktis and uh, under the buktis there was a, a village okay now uh, let us see uh, the rashtra or uh, rashtra is known as a province is a province province is known as a rashtra and it was headed by rashtrapati it was headed by rashtrapati and rashtra rashtra is divided into different uh, uh, vishyas that is uh, vishya means uh, district vishya means uh, district and uh, district was administered by vishayapati district was administered by vishayapati district was called vishya and uh, administrator was called as a vishayapati then the next level of administration is a bukti bukti so mostly the bukti consists of 50 to 70 villages together is called as a bukti nearly 50 to 70 villages combined is called as a bukti and this was administered by bogapati bogapati or is also known as a tahasil present day tahasil that we say no? so tahasil so so basically the bukti uh, he was appointed by the central government so mostly this has to be appointed by the provincial government but in the matter of last guttas the buktis or uh, 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 bogapatis were appointed by central government because they were responsibility in collecting their revenue so they used to collect the revenue with the help of the two people uh, that is called uh, these uh, officers were called as a nalgavandas or uh, desagramukutas so these are the uh, officers under the bogapatis used to collect the revenue and submit it to the bogapati okay now in the next level or lowest unit of administration was a uh, village so village is the lowest unit of administration and it was headed by village headman village headman it was headed by village headman 
so there were village assemblies <clears> or <throat> village assemblies or councils played in a village assemblies or councils played in a effective role uh, with the village administration okay and the next one and the most of the revenue revenue to the country or the province uh, or that is central government per paid from the tribute tribute from the vassals or feudatories uh, this way the revenue and the another way uh, through the mines and forest they used to uh, get uh, tax and they used to get revenue and the next one was a land tax uh, land tax was known as a udranga or bagakar udranga or bagakar let me write it here udranga udranga and bagakar this way the land tax and how the land tax is collected like a one fourth of the tax was collected from the land so from the four four parts is there one part has to be paid to the government so this was the uh, administration and in we see here uh, reference uh, there was no taxation for during the famine famine or drought so if there is any drought or famine took takes place and so the rulers used to exempt from the paying of taxes okay so uh, finally we deal with the <coughs> literature so uh, during the period of rashtrakuta the literature is divided into two that is uh, mainly mainly i'm telling that is part one is a kannada literature and the, the second one sanskrit lit literature so these were very prominent and you know as i said in the beginning the rule of uh, rashtrakutas is the beginning of the kannada literature okay so now kaviraj mark do first we'll deal with the kannada literature then we'll go to into uh, the sanskrit literature so kaviraja mark kaviraja mark is a work by amoga varsha and he has also uh, written prashnotara ratnamalika amoga varsha was uh, sorry kaviraja marga was in kannada but when prashnotara ratnamalika was in sanskrit so it's in sanskrit uh, remember okay and we see some of the important kannada poets like a pampa Pampa, Ponna and Rana. These three poets were known as a three gems of Kannada literature. Pampa, Rana and Ponna. The three poets were known as a three gems of Kannada literature. So first we deal with the Pampa. Uh, uh, he, he, he had a title so, known as a Adikavi. Adhikavi. So he was a, one of the greatest Kannada writer and his works, his work like Adi Purana, Vikram Arjuna Vijaya. Vikram Arjuna Marjuna. Vikram Arjuna Vijaya. So these are the two important works of Pampa. There are many, but these are the two important works of Pampa. Then we see the next poet that is uh, Ponna, Ponna uh, Kannada poet and uh, he had a title known as Kavi Chakravarti Kavi Chakravarti so this title basically given by the Krishna the third so we see most of the literature flourished during the period of the Krishna the third and the Amoga version during this two, two, two rulers period the literature flourished a lot So we see some of the work of Ponna, that is uh, Shanti Purana, uh, one work, and uh, Bhuvanelika, and uh, next one Rama Pyudaya, 
Ramapyadaya and the next Ramakatha. These are the important books of Ponna. Then the other final one that is Ranna. Ranna is also Kannada poet and he was a court poet of Thailapa. So Thailapa was basically a feudatory under the Rashtrakuta ruler. So his work we see Sahas Bhima Vijaya. Sahas Bhima Vijaya and Ran, Ranna Kanda. These are the two works by Ranna. So, work Vadavadane is a work by Shivakoti Chara. It's a Kannada work. And we see Sri Vijaya. Sri Vijaya is a poet. Uh, he was a court poet of Amoga Varsha. Court poet of Amoga Varsha. Uh, Amoga Varsha both were contemporary and wrote Chandra Prabha Purana. Sri Vijaya wrote Chandra Prabha Purana. Uh, going to the next that is uh, Sanskrit writing or Sanskrit literature. So we see uh, we see very good scholars who belongs to, to belongs to Sanskrit literature uh, during the Rashtrakuta Empire. So the famous one, famous one being the Mahavira Charya is basically a mathematician and he was patronized by Amoga Varsha uh, and his work is a Ganita Sava Sangraha Ganita Sava Sangraha is a work of Mahavira Charya is a very important work Ganita Sava Sangraha is many times asked in the exams and the next one Chatisa Ganita Chatisa Ganita is another work and uh, Shantri Shika and jo Jyotish Patala. This were the uh, some of the work of Mahavira Charya. And we see the next two scholar or this most of them used to be uh, the Jain monks or Jain, Jain poets. Okay. So next one that is a uh, uh, Trivikrama Bhatta. So he was patronized by Indra the third. And what what uh, his works are known as a Nala Champu and Damayanti Katha. Nala Champu, Nala Champu and Damayanti Katha. These two works were by Tivikrama Bhatta. And we see the next one that is Jina Sena. Jina Sena was patronized by Amoga Varsha. Basically, he was a guru, a guruji of Amoga Varsha. And he authored some of the works like Adi Purana. Mahapurana and Uttara Purana. So among this, so Adi Purana was not completed during his period, and Adi Purana was completed by his disciple. He is known as a Gunabhadra Charya. Gunabhadra Charya is a disciple of Jina Sena who completed the work Adi Purana. Okay, and we see Halayuda. Halayuda uh, wrote uh, work known as a Kavirahasya. So Halayuda was a, a patronized by King Krishna the third uh, wrote work Kavi Rahasya and we see the Soma Deva Suri. So he is a poet of Arikesari, a feudatory of Rashtrakuta and uh, his work is a Yasasti Laka, Yasasti Laka and Niti Vakya Mitra. Yasasti Laka and Niti Vakya Mitha. These, these are the two works of Swamadeva Suri. The next going into the next that is Pushpa Danta. Um, he was patronized by the Krishna the third and he has written Mahapurana and Nagakumara Charita, Yashodara Charita. So the three works Mahapurana. Nagakumara Charita and Yashodara Charita were Pushpadanta. A good work of Pushpadanta. Uh, then next one that is Chavandraya wrote Charita Sara. Chavandraya wrote Charita Sara. Uh, then uh, an important work that is a Sanskrit work on medicine known as a Kalyana Karaka. 
सो कल्याण करके इस सांस्कृत वर्क बाय ऑन मेडिसिन बाय उग्रादित्य दिस वर्क इस बाय उग्रादित्य अदन विषय दल अदवन आकलंक बट्टा आकलंक बट्टा एंड यस रिटन और ही रोट वर्क नोन है से वर्क्स नोन है से राजवर्तिका राजवर्तिका अष्टशाति अष्टशाति एंड लिगया श्राया सो दिस आर द थ्री वर्क्स बाय आकलंक बट्टा सो दिस आर द सम ऑफ द लिटररी वर्क्स ऑफ राष्ट्रकुटा एम्पायर एंड देर आर मिनिटी नो बट दिस आर द इम्पोर्टेंट आउटर्स आउटर्स एंड राइटिंग्स दैट हैव गिवन ओके सो डीलिंग विद द सोशल लाइफ ऑफ पीपल सो इट वाज लाइक ए कॉमन टू द एवरी डायनास्टी लाइक देर वाज ए फोर डिवीजन ऑफ सोसाइटी लाइक ब्राह्मीन क्षत्रिय वैश्य एंड शूद्र दिस वाज गोइंग ऑन and uh, the most important among them were the brahmins so they play, played a wider role and uh, shrudra the importance of shudra was increased means they were brought to the mainstream of the society along with the uh, outcast <coughs> so there were also untouchables who were given importance so this is the social life of uh, the rashtrakutas are Uh, so i have i have explained from the beginning the uh, the origin of uh, rashtrakuta and we saw uh, political history of the rashtrakutas uh, the different rulers who ruled the rashtrakuta empire and uh, then in between i have also given some of the art and architectural works of the uh, rashtrakuta that is the kailash temple and ellora uh, at ellora and elephant cave at mumbai and Uh, later on i also explain the administrative system of rashtrakutas so how the administration took place like central government and state government and then next coming into the the literature literature and administration system of the rashtrakutas are impo- important so i have also explain the literature uh, of rashtrakutas and finally concluding with uh, some of the social conditions of uh, uh, rashtrakutas okay friends for the more updates please subscribe my channel thank you